It is now time for question period. Leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Okay. So this question, Mr. Speaker, is for ever, whoever is acting premier today. Hey, hey. the lucky man. Speaker, uh, to the acting premier, Section 50.31 of the Electricity Act reads, I quote, all proceeds payable to Her Majesty in the right of Ontario in respect of the disposition of any securities or debt obligations of or any other interest in Hydro One, Inc., a corporation established under Section 50, a corporation or other entity established under Section 50.1, or an arrangement made under 50.1 shall be paid to the financial corporation. Acting Premier, are you going to follow the law? Are you going to pay down the $27 billion hydro debt with the money you get from the sale of Hydro One? Thank you. thank you very much, Speaker, and I want to thank the member, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the leader of the official opposition, for the, the question. And uh, first of all, Speaker, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we know that Mr. Ed Clark will be uh, tabling his recommendations uh, later today. And I think it will be, uh, uh, Speaker, will not be wise to preempt uh, what's uh, what's in the report. What's clear and what's something that the premier has been, uh, the premier has been very clear about, uh, Speaker, that, uh, that uh, will come we to order. want to find opportunities to unlock the value uh, in the, in the tremendous assets we have uh, in our uh, in our province and be able to use that value, Speaker, uh, to fund critical public infrastructure that is needed in our process, such as, uh, such as our highways, Answer. our transit, uh, and our transportation infrastructure. Speaker, That's something that we presented to the people of Ontario in the last election, and we continue to work on that to build Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. The Acting Premier, the reason we put the law into place was to ensure that the money from any sale of Hydro One would be used to pay down the debt and provide relief to Hydro customers through lower electricity rates. After all, it's the Hydro customers that own Hydro One. You're planning on doing the exact opposite. You're going to run off with the sale proceeds and leave customers with a $27 billion debt to pay. That can only mean higher hydro rates. Yeah. Deputy Premier, can you guarantee Hydro customers that a sale of Hydro One will not result in higher hydro bills for decades to come? <laughs> Well, Speaker, I think it's ironic to get this question from uh, from the the party and the member opposite, who actually saddled uh, the Ontario taxpayers with this enormous uh, stranded uh, hydro debt. They are the one who left this uh, this unsavory legacy to the people of Ontario that they are working hard towards in paying off. And in fact, Speaker, it's this government that has been year by year by year has been paying off that stranded hydro debt to the point, Speaker, that we can now proudly. Thank you. Finish, please. Speaker, we've been, we've been uh, over the last 12 years, have been paying off that debt that was left by the previous Conservative uh, government. Uh, we are uh, up to the point, Speaker, that we will be removing the debt retirement charge from the uh, consumer uh, rate payers because they have paid uh, with their part uh, in that uh, case. Uh, Speaker, we'll continue to make sure that the stranded debt is paid. That's something that was left behind by Thank the you. official opposition when they were in government. <laughs> Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, the majority of the $27 billion debt comes from David Peterson's decision to not have Darlington come in on time and on budget. In fact, $14 billion over budget. That's the majority. And the rest of it was incurred by the old Ontario Hydro before I was even born and before you were even born. So get your story straight and stop, it. stop telling falsehoods for the people of Ontario. You have an obligation under the law not to fritter the money away, not to wrong Peter to pay Paul. Uh, in between the applause, I did hear something I would like him to withdraw. Withdraw, Mr. Speaker. You have an obligation, Minister, and I say to the government, to pay down that debt. It's legacy debt. It's debt that's been there for a long time. We're paying big interest on it. Hydro customers own Hydro One. They should be the ones that benefit through lower rates or at least stable rates for the next few decades. Question. That's the purpose of the law. We knew some scoundrel would come around, along at this point in history and try and steal that money for other purposes to patch up your mismanagement of the last 12 years. Do the right thing and follow the law. Before I continue, I'm going to offer a caution. Um, that uh, 
as we move along in this. I'm starting to hear some on the edge stuff and something I actually asked to be withdrawn. So let's just keep it within parliamentary language, please. Carry on. Uh, speaker, it's, it's, it's rather rich to, uh, to, to get uh, this, this, uh, uh, this question Is from, uh, from Prince Edward the official Hastings opposition to order? who made a mess, made a big Remember from mess Leeds of the hydro order? system in this province when Remember they were North. in government. Stop the clock, please. I am, um, I am going to repeat myself to ensure that those that were making noise while I was speaking the member from Leeds Grenville will come to order, the member from Simcoe North will come to order, and the member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order. Carry on. Speaker, that's the party when government made a mess of the hydro system in this province. Uh, they, they had too many false starts. They were burning dirty coal uh, to produce electricity in this province, polluting our air, causing asthma in our, in our children. They're the one who uh, had that momentous uh, uh, blackout in, in, our, uh, in our province, burning diesel, burning diesel in... in Please. Speaker, we've been working with a lot, we've been working hard over the last 12 uh, uh, years in rebuilding the energy system in this province, making That's sure that we, we clean up the energy system by shutting down coal fire uh, generation, making sure that we have got renewable green electricity in Thank our you. system and reliable source of electricity for Thank Ontarians. You. New question. The member from here on Bruce. The Premier herself claimed the cost of gas will increase over three cents under the Liberals' pay to pollute scheme. And with this Liberal government's track record, we know it will end up costing much more. Even if we pretend it will only be three cents, as you claim, that will cost Ontarians an additional $700 million a year. That's another $100 to Ontario families to shoulder your burden of mismanagement. In rural Ontario, people don't have the choice not to drive. How are rural families who must buy gas to get to work and to get to school, regardless of the price, going to be able to afford this increase? Uh, uh, speaker, first of all, I want to congratulate our Premier and the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change for taking a most important and momentous decision when it comes to ensuring that we actually deal with the issue of climate change in our uh, province by introducing the cap and trade system. The official uh, opposition uh, speaker needs to get their hand out, out of the quicksand. They got to choose a lane. Are they, are they going to continue to deny climate change or are they going to stand up for Ontarians and the future of our province when it comes to a cleaner, uh, uh, cleaner environment and a better, a better uh, uh, and a stronger economy, uh, Speaker. I guess, Speaker, now we know what PC party stands for. It's the pro-coal, pro-carbon party of Ontario, Speaker. They're the only ones who are standing in support of carbon. The whole world is moving forward in making sure that we put price on carbon, we make sure that we deal with greenhouse gas emissions, because it is essential to the future prosperity of our Thank you. Supplementary. To the acting premier, this isn't the first time that the Liberals have copied a European energy plan before they saw the evidence. How's that turned out? Your Green Energy Act was supposed to save the environment, reduce pollution, and create Minister jobs. Of Children and Youth Services. Instead, it's caused energy prices to skyrocket, made your Liberal friends rich, and drove jobs out of this province. This pay-to-pollute scheme will be the Green Energy Act 2.0. Yeah. However, this time, it won't just be electricity rates that soar. It's now a tax on everything. The Green Energy Act cost each household $1,100 a year. Acting Premier, how much more will your pay-to-pollute scheme cost Ontarian households? Thank you. Acting Premier. Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am a Fascinated by this line of questioning, Mr. Speaker. The party opposite put a cap and trade system on nitric oxide, sulfur dioxide, and carbon monoxide. 
and they traded between companies. They're down 40 percent and 46 percent. And, and, you can, and Mr. Speaker, you can hear that this is a very sensitive issue for the party opposite, given how loud they're being right now. So we are about to design a cap-and-trade system. Where it is in place, in places like California and Quebec, is actually enabling higher productivity. A, a carbon price in BC, so accelerated gender growth and lower costs for everyone, Mr. Speaker. When they learn something about the difference between cap and trade and taxes, Mr. Speaker, which is sort of 101 Thank you. MVP, they should call. Thank you. Final supplementary. Go back to the acting oh, premier. The degree months. with which this government has lost touch with reality is mind-boggling. Yeah. One day they rise in the house to tell us how Ontarians are not saving enough for retirement. The next day they create a tax on everything that will take money right out of their pockets, right out of their savings accounts. Higher costs mean less disposable income. That means less money to save, less money to spend to keep the economy moving. That's basic economics. Acting Premier, how much money will your tax on everything take from the retirement savings accounts of Ontarians? How much? So I, I think it's time for a little lesson in basic economics here, Mr. Speaker. Ten back. Well, that got you your second one. The member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke come to order. And the member from Prince Edward Hastings come to order. And the member from Lanark come to order. Carry on. Mr. Speaker. So Tembec, great Ontario forestry company, reduces its emissions and improves its plant. The average per GHG emissions from an average forestry, let's just let's say 50. And we set the cap at 40. Tembec is at 30. Tembec then has a surplus. It may sell it to Cascade, which may need two or three years to do that. Cascade then can buy the time. The money Tembec gets back reinvested in a higher productivity plant, more jobs. Yes, sir. That's how it works, Mr. Speaker. It's a good thing, as Martha Stewart would say, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Question, the leader of the third party. Speaker, my question is for the acting premier. First, the Liberals showed how they disrespect Ontarians by keeping their plan to sell Hydro One secret during the election campaign. campaign. Now they're disrespecting Ontarians and this assembly in the way that they've rolled out the Clark report. My question to the acting premier is, can he phone the premier and tell her to get over here and answer the questions of the opposition?
continues, I shall pass the question and move to the official opposition.
dismissed the member from Timmins, James Bay.
will dismiss the member from Nickelbelt.
from our, Gal our, our Golden Valley Tulin and the Windsor Tecumseh and Niagara Falls are named. Having the question be put by the official opposition, I will allow the uh, uh, acting premier to respond. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And uh, I think I can hear things again now. And uh, apologies to the, uh, the uh, members of the community here in the public gallery for uh, the question period they have witnessed so far. Uh, speaker, as the as finish uh, naming people. Finish, please. As speaker, as, as the member opposite, I'm sure knows that private sector gas distribu distribution companies are regulated by the Ontario Energy Board. The OEB is an independent regulator with a mandate to protect the best interests of energy consumers in Ontario. And as an independent regulator, speaker, the OEB has the authority to enforce its statutory powers. I understand that in this particular case, the OEB has ruled that it will grant the certificate to Greenfield on the basis that it is in the public int best interest and that customers will not be unduly burdened. And the government speaker supports uh, the board and its processes. Thank you. Supplementary. Yeah, where was I? Um, <laughs> Acting Premier, there is an odor around this OEB decision and it has nothing to do with the smell of natural gas. This sweetheart deal is going to result in higher prices for consumers. After 12 years of Liberals in office, energy customers can hardly afford further increases to their cost of living. After all of the scandals during your long reign in power, the people of Ontario know how you do business. Special deals and favours for well-connected Liberal insiders who scratch your back when election time rolls around. Acting Premier, I ask you once again. How can voters believe that you did not offer Eastern Power cheap gas so that they would go along with your liberal seat-saving plan back in the 2011 election? Speaker, uh, speaker I, I'm, I'm confident that the member opposite very well knows uh, the, the kind of system we have in place in Ontario. The regulation around pricing uh, and approval process uh, uh, 
uh, in the energy sector is done by an independent regulator called the Ontario Energy Board. It is a quasi-judicial uh, body. It's arm's length from the government. The government speaker does not intervene in the in the matters and the affairs of the Ontario uh, Energy Board. It has a, a, a very robust process. In fact, a uh, speaker where the public and, and proponents and opponents uh, can participate uh, and we respect the process and the decisions that the Ontario Energy Board makes. And I ask the member opposite Answer. to respect the decision as well. Thank you. Thank you. No question. We will not be participating uh, in this question period. Member from uh, Simcoe North. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is for the Minister of Education. When asked about OSSTF walking away from negotiations during the scrum yesterday, you simply shrugged it off. You implied that this was just a tactic and they would be back in no time. Well, we have been saying it for years. You have severely mismanaged the province's finances, and the result of that, we are broke. Because of that, on Monday, children in Durham might show up at a school to face a picket line, and other boards, Mr. Speaker, will follow soon after. Your liberal mismanagement will force thousands of kids out of the classroom. Minister, please don't shrug this off. Will you get serious about negotiations and prevent this strike from happening? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. And first of all, I must say that that was a serious misrepresentation of what I said yesterday. What I said yesterday was that we remain absolutely committed to being at the table and negotiating, that I am in fact concerned, very concerned, that OSSTF uh, chose to walk away from the provincial table. But what I would also point out is that they said they suspended their participation at the provincial table. They did not say they ended their participation at the provincial table. And I did point out the accuracy, uh, accurate words that were used to the media. And what I also said was I was very concerned that having suspended their participation Answer. at the provincial table, that this greatly increased the probability of a strike in Durham, and that that, that very much concerned me. Thank you. Supplementary. Minister, uh, the other side of the table had said you aren't serious about discussions and negotiations. That's very clear. You, and that was, in their, that was in their memorandum. You keep saying, and I quote, you won't negotiate in the media. And I end the quote. Well, apparently you won't negotiate at all. And apparently a number of boards won't negotiate at all along with your central bargaining. Your budget is already forcing other school boards to cut special education teachers. You're fast-tracking fast -tracking the closure of school community hubs right across this province in as short as nine weeks. And now, just weeks before graduation and prom, your years of financial mismanagement is coming back to haunt you. And the people that will suffer the most are the students and parents across this province. Because of your mismanagement of the economy, parents might not be able to see their child walk across the stage to graduate. Question. Minister. What are you going to say to those parents Minister with this mess you've got on your hands with the fiscal mismanagement of this province? Minister of Education. Well, the first thing I would say to the member opposite and to everyone in the province is I continue to believe that what we need are negotiated settlements. We have Absolutely. nine central tables. Discussions are currently ongoing at eight of those central tables. I fully anticipate that we will have discussions ongoing at nine of those central tables when, uh, when we get over this quote-unquote suspension and that we will work very hard to negotiate collective agreements and we will negotiate them at the table because everything I've learned about collective bargaining over the years tells me that when you negotiate in the media, negotiations fail. So our goal Answer. is to get to the table and to go negotiate settlements because negotiating is the Thank way you. we deliver programs for students. Thank you. Questions? The member from Halliburton, Porto Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health. Minister, last week the Select Committee on Sexual Violence and Harassment travelled to Northern Ontario to hear firsthand from uh, service providers and victims. During the meeting in Sioux Lookout, the committee heard a presentation from two RNs uh, from the 
Sioux Lookout Menno Ya Win Health Centre, who expressed concerns over staff training within their assault care and treatment program. Currently, there are only four full-time RNs hospital-wide qualified to provide care to sexual assault victims. In order to gain the proper skills, these nurses need to travel to urban settings like Toronto to complete the full forensic training. The RNO RNAO has stated that in the past, when the programs were originally funded, they were monitored under priority programs at the ministry level, but have since been transferred to the hospital, which is burdensome on their budgets. Question. Minister, will you commit to providing the necessary training, funding for training nurses, especially those in northern Thank communities, you. so they can properly treat these victims? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the question and the opportunity to respond. I, I think I first want to recognize, uh, Mr. Speaker, the important work that that committee, the Committee on Sexual Violence and Assault, is doing uh, on behalf of all Ontarians. This is uh, incredibly important uh, work, and uh, we are all looking forward to uh, uh, their recommendations as well as implementing the important policies and procedures and systems that are required to backstop those recommendations. It's a very important issue to me uh, personally as well as, of course, as Minister of Health and to the government of, as a whole. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sexual violence and harassment are unfortunately a reality in every community in this province. We must continue to work hard to address it fundamentally to prevent, to stamp out uh, sexual violence and assault where it occurs, but unfortunately where it does occur we need to respond in appropriate ways. And the uh, member opposite is uh, reflecting one of the many ways that the province is involved in providing a response. I'm happy to Thank address you. it specifically in the supplementary. Thank you. Supplementary. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so these small rural hospitals, especially those that are, are in located in remote communities like Sioux Lookout, need dedicated funding to ensure that nurses have the proper training to care for victims of sexual assault, especially in the collection of the forensic evidence to prosecute the offenders. When evidence isn't collected in a timely manner, sexual assault charges can be thrown out by the, cor the court. In this case, four full-time RNs only qualified to provide care, it can take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours before a victim may even be seen. As hospitals work to balance their budget, the sexual assault domestic violence treatment centers have experienced deep program cuts. So, Minister, you can act today. Will you commit to the funding before the budget so we can make the RNs in small rural hospitals, especially Northern Ontario, able to receive this important training. Please, uh, Thank you. Minister, act today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for the question. This is a very important issue. In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, the government currently funds 35 hospital-based sexual assault and domestic violence treatment centres uh, right across the province, including, I believe, there are eight in northern Ontario specifically. And, and these are centres that provide comprehensive and timely support to women, to women, children and men who are victims and survivors of sexual assault or domestic violence. All of these 35 centres across the province are staffed by health care professionals specially trained to deliver high-quality care, evidence collection. All of those centres have access to rape kits and other uh, processes that are required to provide, to collect and provide that evidence in a timely fashion, as the member opposite has indicated is so important. They also provide education to other health care providers and community agencies and the general public. There is always, uh, in everything we do as a province and as a government, always more work to be done. I uh, hear the, uh, the specific uh, question with regards to, to training from the member opposite, Answer. and I will be following up. Thank you. New question, the member from Holman uh, Speaker, uh, also uh, to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, we have a problem in our riding. Uh, Simcoe Doctor is retiring with a roster of 4,600 uh, patients and uh, has no successor. Uh, this exacerbates uh, an already fragile situation. Also in June 2013, another example, a Port Dover physician with a roster of 2,000 retired, uh, again without a replacement. Over the years, I've met with a committee trying to build a new health center in Port Dover. Uh, they're enthusiastic, but, but they need doctors. Um, I wrote you January 22nd, uh, seeking possible solutions. I, I, I await a reply for that letter, Minister. And uh, uh, Minister, uh, I'm asking, uh, could you provide us with some advice, uh, some action 
to help our community down in Norfolk County to attract uh, physicians and also to uh, help attract physicians in other underserviced areas. Thank you. Minister for Health and Long Term Care. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the question uh, uh, from the member opposite. It, uh, it is a very important issue in terms of physician supply around this province, and it can be challenging in certain parts of the province, uh, more challenging than in others, uh, to, uh, to gain that supply of physicians. It's so important to provide that, that primary care support to uh, the residents. Uh, we have a number of initiatives that are underway, uh, work by Health Force Ontario that specifically targets underserviced and regularly serviced areas that are fa facing challenges with regards to physician supply. Uh, we also have a program called Healthcare Connect that aims to attach unattached patients to new family doctors. But, Mr. Speaker, it, it's important as well to recognize that we have made significant progress in this province in terms of both attachment of patients. Uh, we now have about 94 per cent of Ontarians uh, who do have a regular primary care provider. Answer. Generally, that's a physician, but it may also be another uh, primary care provider. And in the supplementary, I'll talk to other investments that we've made. Thank you. Supplementary. Yeah, uh, thank you, Minister. And I, I feel that both uh, there's a Norfolk General Hospital recruitment team and also this uh, this Port Dover committee. Uh, one option I feel is they need an, an empty family health organization to enable them to better enable them to attract doctors. I'm also told of a need for an additional health organization in uh, West Norfolk, down in the uh, the Port Row and Delhi area. Uh, Minister, you have indicated previously in question period you would like to see more uh, family health teams in the small towns and uh, rural Ontario. However, I understand uh, there's a cap allowing something like only 20 new family doctors a month in the entire province. We graduate something like 500 a year from Ontario's medical schools. Uh, to summarize, in Norfolk, we need another 14 doctors according to the uh, formula. Uh, my question, Minister, why will you not create uh, new family health teams or other uh, empty family health organizations, for example? Thank you, Minister. Well, thank you. And, uh well, I know the member knows that I was born in Norfolk General Hospital, so this is a part of the province that I know, I know, I know very well, and he's acknowledging that there's no plaque. And, uh, but, but this is a very important issue, and, uh, and Mr. Speaker, I, the, uh, the fact is that there's, uh, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, there are more than there are 2,300 more family doctors practicing in this province than were before. That's a almost 25 percent increase. Uh, but there is still more work to be done. Nothing prevents family doctors, for example, if that's what we're talking about, setting up shop anywhere in this province. They can do so through fee for service. They can create a family health group as well, where they can get together with other family doctors. Uh, they can work as uh, locums as well. They can replace a retirement retiring physician, for example, in a family health team. But we're also, we have allocated. 20 spots per month for underserviced areas around the province, and we've specifically looked to our lens to identify for the, the purpose of uh, deploying these family health team doctors, of identifying where what parts of the province should be included. It may be that this part of Ontario is part of that uh, designated area. We should know in the, in the next several weeks. No question. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you very much, Speaker. Back to the Acting Premier. Acting Premier, earlier in question period, our leader asked you about what would be done with the proceeds of the sale of Hydro One, and he pointed out very clearly that under the Electricity Act, those for the proceeds of that sale must go to the Ontario Electricity Financial Corporation in order to pay down the electricity debt in this province. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Do you intend to obey the law of the land here in the province of Ontario with respect to the disposition of those funds, or do you plan to break the law and, and put, this, put this burden onto the backs of the electricity consumers who have already paid for that debt? I, uh, I, I'm also going to caution again. Going through to something unparliamentary also includes accusing someone of a criminal act, and I'm going to offer him advice not to go down there again. Please respond. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Speaker. And I, and I want to restate the fact that we have worked uh, extremely hard over the last uh, uh, 12 years in, in rebuilding the energy system in this province. And there has been uh, a, a lot of concerted effort has been made in, in making sure that we have got the, we've got the security of generation in our province, uh, that we have a secure uh, transmission and distribution system uh, in, in our province. We have worked hard, Speaker, in eliminating coal as a source of of uh, generating electricity in our province. In fact, Speaker, we are extremely proud that we are the first province in North America uh, to be able to do so. One of the single last, la largest uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction uh, project, in, 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 in fact, to the point that even, even the conservative prime minister of this country is trying to take credit uh, for that action after opposing uh, that, uh, that decision again and again. Uh, speaker, not to make, uh, make sure, uh, not, to ensure, not to mention to ensure that we have renewed energy. We'll continue to work on our energy sector to make sure that it meets the demands of our province. Thank you. Final su uh, supplementary. Don't believe I got an answer there, but Minister, it is not the responsibility of the electricity consumer in this province to bail you out of your financial mismanagement of the past 12 years. It is not their job to now pay for your infrastructure plan. They pay for the electricity system. So now that you've decided that you're going to sell off a portion of Hydro One, it is the law under the Electricity Act that that money must go to pay off the electricity debt. It's not the money. The money is not there for any other purpose. So I'll ask you in a different way. Will you stand in your place today and tell the people of Ontario that as a minister of this crown, you will obey the law? Thank you. Mr. Well, Speaker, uh, the, this government and the people of Ontario has been working extremely hard over the last 12 years to clean up the mess that the party opposite left behind when they were in government. They are the one who settled. The member from Simcoe North is warned. Carry on. Speaker, this party opposite that settled Ontario with a massive stranded uh, hydro debt, which we have been paying year after year. Uh, Speaker, we've been very clear with the people of Ontario that our priority is to build Ontario up by investing in, in critical infrastructure in, in all our communities. In fact, and I hear members opposite standing up all the time, Speaker. The member for Prince Edward Hastings is warned. Carry on. We hear speaker, members from opposite party uh, standing up all the time asking for critical, uh, uh, important investment Answer. in our infrastructure, uh, be it our highways, our roads, our public uh, transit. This government has an ambitious plan. We're going to invest in our infrastructure to Thank improve you. the quality of lives of Ontarians. Thank you. We have a deferred vote on the motion of allocation of time on Bill 57, an act to create a framework for pooled registered pension plans and to make consequential amendments to other acts. Call on the members. This will be a five-minute bill.
I, I, I wanted to point it out. Members, take their seats, please. All members, take their seats. Mr. Bradley has moved government notice of motion number 17. All those in favour, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Madame Mayor. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Berardinetti. Mr. Berardinetti. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Padre. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Rosetti. Mr. Rosetti. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Balkison. Mr. Balkison. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Manga. Ms. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassick. Ms. Jassick. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Domerla. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Ms. Verniel. Ms. Verniel. All those please rise one at a time that are opposed. <coughs> Mr. And uh, be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Ms. Jo um, Jones. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Cla McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Thank Patrick Brown who voted for this. The ayes being 48 and the nays being 21, I declare the motion carried. There are no further debate. Uh, there are no further votes. This house stands adjourned until uh, recessed until 1 p.m. this afternoon.